Hello everyone, this is Decrypt. So in this video today, I'm going to be solving the challenge from Crypto Pals. So these are a bunch of good challenges that are put together by the NCC uh, teams. So here's how you go and find the challenges. They have a set of eight challenges starting from basics to advanced. I'm going to be going in order in which they're presented. So why I'm doing this, it's kind of very good to get this practical understanding of how the crypto, uh, cryptography works. And this really solidifies your knowledge of uh, how the crypto, you know, how things are getting encrypted, decrypted, how uh, encryption related attacks works. Uh, so that's why. So let's go and get started. The first challenge here is to convert this hex challenge to uh, hex spring to base 64. So I'm going to be using Python for this because uh, I know Python and I, I guess it's easier compared to other languages, but that's just my opinion. Uh, you could do uh, in, in whatever language you prefer. And let's go and get what we need in Python to use uh, to complete this exercise. We have base64 and hex. So Python has specific libraries that get handled uh, base64 and hex. So you could just go and Google uh, Python base64. And yeah, you find this function here. So I have already done that. So if you have not, uh, if you have never coded or done something which uh, concerns in encryption, all those things in Python or whatever language, I, I recommend you to go and Google it. It's pretty simple and that's how you get to learn. So let's get uh, this import functions going. So base64 and I'm also uh, gonna import another, another library that help me with handling this hex strings. So I'm going to use the bin ASCII module and import Han Hexlify. So this is basically Han Hexlify translated, you know, do the reverse of hex encoding. Now there's also Hexlify, but I guess we don't need this uh, for this exercise, right? So we have a hex string here. So I'm going to store that in the hex, the variable core X, but you see a rule here that says always operate on raw bytes, never on encoded string. So what this basically means that uh, we need to consider this hex string as bytes. So I'm going to put a B here. So people who are familiar with Python uh, know understand how this works. So yeah, there you go. And this should produce this string. So this is the expected output from this and uh, exercise. So first thing, we, they are saying this is hex encoded. Let's see what this looks like when we need hex decoded, right? So that's the plain text that we can all read. Um, so now we need to go and do this base64 from here. So let's go and do base64. So that's the module, that's a, the class that you've imported. So there's a method called b64 uh, my bad, encode. And we need this uh, Hanex applied input to be passed in here. So I'm going to paste this here. And there we go. We have the same string that uh, that we should be expecting to get. So that's pretty much it. Do you, uh, the questions are like, do you need actually to go do something in Python for this? Can we do something from the bash terminal? Of course you can, um, but I prefer starting with Python so that all of these challenges that I'm going to uh, do will be all in Python. And so that's it. I think we can, if we have a bit of time to kind of go and do the second exercise, uh, let me know how you want to, uh, how you prefer doing these exercises because I don't want to take really too much of the time doing this, but I just want to be short snippets of this video that you can just take a quick look and get something out of it. Um, so let's go. Fixed hexor, write a function that takes two equal length buffers, produces the XOR combination. So if your function works properly, then when you read, feed it the string, you should produce this. So basically asking me, uh, asking us to do, hey, do this XOR. So we get, uh, again, we, I think we have the hex encoder en string here. So let's go and put that in A. And let's go and put the other one in B. All right, so we need to do, uh, actually, they, we got to write a function that does this for us. So we can write it 
from the shell. It just uh, sucks doing it from here. But yeah, let's open a text pad and import the same function that we used before. Uh, we don't need the base64 here, so uh, just Im import the hexify. from Benaski here. Okay, so what we need, we need to write a function. So let's write a function. Do XOR because we need to be doing XOR. We're gonna take input two inputs. Let's just call it A and B. All right, this is tab over there. And since we are dealing with hex we need to uh, unhexify it first let's see how this goes so i'm going to do um, x1 equals unhexify a x2 equals uh, the same thing but we're going to use the b here so now we have that, and next we need to do uh, an XOR uh, with that. So first, first of all, we need to check if these both are the same length so that uh, we can do a byte by byte XOR. So let's check uh, if x1 not equals x2 should be length actually. Almost missed that. So. So if the lens are not equal, sorry buddy, we can't help you here then, right? So we're gonna erase an exception. You could just say, hey, hey, I can't deal with this unequal lens chain, can't deal with this, right? Right, so we could do that. So it's, it's good practice always to anticipate what kind of exceptions to that your function is gonna throw and kind of handle them upfront. It just makes you, uh, it just makes things easier down the way when you are dealing with big functions and big logic uh, so that you can debug it effectively. So now we know that lengths are equal and we're gonna say return here, uh, right? So. If it returns without any output, that means we know that, and it's also gonna print that it's, it can't do anything about it. Now do a byte-wise comparison. <clears throat> so when you, uh, what do you, what's the point of doing unhexify here? Is let me just show you here. So with with the f the last thing that we did, the, the last exercise, we unhexified this. So we'll just store it in a variable a, and I I, I just want to show you why are we doing the unhexify function here so when we do this a of zero you see we are not getting u we are getting 73 okay so which which means that we are going to get an integer format of that particular represented uh, character and it's easy to do xor in, with integers in uh, python so xor works like simply doing the symbol let's say 14 and you get an integer. And with that, you can do um, convert that back to hex, uh, unhex light format to get the point, uh, the expected output from here. So let's go. So for each, uh, say for, for i in x1, because we know they, are, they both are of equal length. Uh, so, so we can just operate on length of uh, either one of them. So length of, x1 so it should be ranged there so we need to take byte by byte from the input and xor with the other one so this is going for the first thing it's going to be i is going to be zero until the length of x1 all right and for for i in range we're gonna do uh, an xor as as we saw here let's do uh x1 of i xor x2 of i 
right? And what we're going to do with this, we're going to store it somewhere, right? So let's create a variable here to store XOR equals. Um, we're going to create a binary string here. So, I mean, byte format string. So I'm going to add XOR plus equals. That's that's the benefit of using this. Like string in Python works similarly on how you operate on integers, except that when you add your basically concatenating the strings together. Okay. So that will do it for all of the function. Now we have an XOR, but if we just do this, um, actually I'm gonna make it a list. Okay, so that will become panel. I'll tell you why. Uh, there's other you know, better ways to do this. Uh, I just care about the output here, not really about how fast it's going to get done, get things done. But that will matter in production. Like if you're doing actual, if you're implementing certain things in production, you want to make sure it's as efficient as possible. But so why I'm doing this so that we will now have a list of numbers like that. Basically, it won't, it won't be on three, four, five, um, obviously, but we will have an XOR output. Now from here, I'm going to take, uh, create another string uh, out. This is going to be byte, right? And for, again, for i in XOR, or we could just say value or whatever you want, you know, it doesn't matter. I'm going to take the i and format it. So we're going to convert the number to hex. So format i in hex format. Uh, so this is way of doing uh, format strings in Python. So we're basically saying we're expecting two. We want a zero. Uh, actually, uh, we want a zero if there's just one character. Uh, and we need two places. Um, we need to be length should be two. And we need to be in hex format. Right. And we're going to add this to uh, concat this to the out variable that we just created. So we're gonna right. This is what we're gonna do. And finally, we're gonna return out. And let's see if this works. Uh, since we already imported in it, this in my previous exercise, we don't really have to import these functions again. Let's see if this throws any error. Okay. Um, okay, let's do, oh, we already stored this in A and B, right? So let's do uh, print do XOR. We can just do a tab here if you're working in an uh, interactive shell on Python. And let's so let's see if this works. Okay, where is that? Uh, in line one and three. Three, unhexlify A. So let's see what this returns us. Oh, I gotcha. So since we have like modified the value of A here, I'm gonna do that. We gotta do this, like we gotta restore the value. So go back and make sure this is correct. And make sure uh, unhexify of A. Yeah, this is what, what we want. Let's go and do this again can concat string to bytes in line 12. Okay, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Okay, and why is that? Because this this thing is not, it's just preceding the input in hex format, but it's actually not uh, returning in anything in bytes. It's returning things as, um, you know, string. So what we need to do here is just encode it so that this will return a string. So 
Uh, I'll just show you what that means, actually. Uh, let's say A, oh, I, I don't want to modify that. Let's say Q equals hello. When you type Q, you see that string. So when you type type of Q here, you get string. But when you do that, hello.encode, when you type Q again now, you see a B in front of it just saying it's uh, bytes. Uh, so when you do the type of Q again, it shows class of bytes. So basically, the error is saying we need bytes because out is declared as a byte. So we're going to, since we made this modification, we're going to copy and paste this here again. And let's do this again. Here we go. So we have an output. This took longer than I expected, but uh, this is pretty much how we do uh, things. So I'm, I'm sure uh, you liked it, or if you found something uh, that you'd not like, please leave that in the comments so I can make sure I get that addressed in the next videos. But thanks for watching. I will continue to post the videos of other exercises, so keep uh, coming back and taking a look. Thank you very much. Have a great day. Bye.